What up, BBI fam? Back again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about dynamic spreadsheeting yet again. Um, obviously, I did original videos on this dynamic spreadsheeting, or the concept of how you can get, for example, price data or something else as dynamic from the game into your Google Docs or Excel spreadsheets. Now, in the case of today, we're going to talk a little bit more about the general overview of Google Docs spreadsheets and how they can impact, you know, your ability to to micromanage variables in Eve Online. There is a limit to how much you can do with spreadsheets, and I think that eventually, if there's enough interest, uh, we will go over a more in-depth review of perhaps like a programmatic approach uh, to deal with the API data contained therein, and therefore, you know, your ability to kind of deal with dynamic data. I think that there's a limit to how much you can do with spreadsheets, and at a certain point, what you would want to do is transition to a traditional, for example, uh, website database or something like that. Um, as well as a traditional programming language to make sure that you're able to interact with the API in a way that's kind of sustainable over time and that isn't going to cause damage to your spreadsheets or to the Google, you know, API or something like that. So for the limitation on spreadsheets, we are going to be limited, for example, by this function called import XML. And I know a lot of you watched my previous videos and found that import XML is a command that can go wrong. We're going to get into that today. We're going to look at some of the ways that import XML can fail you um, and basically announce that there is another direction. And let me know in the comments section if you're interested in this because it is basically going to be a tutorial on programming. So for those of you that don't really want to learn a programming language, I would say Google Spreadsheets, Google Documents is probably uh, an acceptable middle ground. But for those of you that want to take your API data or your dynamic data on Eve to the next level, uh, you have to let me know if you want tutorials on programming languages. All right, so for starters, let's jump right in. What is an API? API stands for an Application Programming Interface. This is, technically speaking, the method in which websites will interact with one another. Of course, there are other ways, other layers, other, uh, other types of technology that are going to allow websites to interact with one another, but the API is, a, uh, is an automated interface by which you can query a database or a server. You're going to provide it some input commands or some parameters uh, for your interaction with the API, and it's going to send you back some data directly out of its databases or out of its server. So rather than having, for example, to go to a website, click on the item that you want, or type it into a search box, you know, and then find your price data from that, instead, this API is going to be a way for us to, to directly request uh, price data or other data from a server such as EVE Online uh, and get back some information on th that item or those prices or whatever. So Limitations of Google Documents. The import XML command, we can't have 50 or 100 or 200 of these import XML commands. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the amount of data that you're able to process through Google Documents, through Google Sheets, is limited. When your sheets start to get to a certain size, when they reach critical mass, when there are enough functions that are running uh, on the spreadsheet itself that it starts to slow down your browser, I think that that basically becomes the limitation of Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets. At the point by which you're no longer able to kind of reasonably navigate through your spreadsheet if you encounter lag, if you encounter your system hangs, or even in some cases it can crash, you know, Google Chrome or your browser, um, then that's basically it. You can't get any larger than that. So what we looked at in the past is a, is a method that basically arranges um, a number of items or selects a smaller data set from the subset of items of Eve. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and query those for price data. So it's basically a, a market uh, quick sheet or a market watch sheet. That's what I've created in the past. What we're going to look at today is some approaches that we can get all price data from Eve. Because ultimately what we want to create is uh, a categorized and, and kind of watch trends of all price data in Eve such that we're able to see something like uh, a spike in the sell cost of a particular ship or item. So for example, if someone goes to market and buys out all the Cerberus hulls or something like that, then we want to be able to see that come up on our spreadsheet. We want to see that highlighted, and that's going to be an opportunity for us to enter the market as a producer on Cerberus hulls. Now, this wouldn't be possible, strictly speaking, uh, completely on Google Documents without some kind of a helper function or without some scripting or something else kind of as a background technology that's going to help this interaction become more smooth because realistically the API interaction is not actually that smooth. It's not really streamlined. Basically what we're doing is we're requesting a specific page. For example, uh, we're requesting the, the page that includes price data. Uh, and then we're requesting a specific subset of price data, i.e. a list of type IDs. And so if you're not familiar with type IDs, that's a, uh, a unique 
um, identifier for every item, module, ship, anything that exists in the game has a unique what's called a type ID, and this allows it to be indexed and, and searched directly as a number rather than by a name, because of course, as we know, over time, names in EVE can change, and these type IDs typically won't ever change. So for example, if we're looking for type ID 34, which is Tritanium, then the way that API call works is we're going to ask a server, it could be the EVE Online server now that Crest is available, and we will talk about that, or it could be something like EVE Central's API, or the API that we're looking at today, which comes from a site called uh, EVE Market Data. So we're going to request the type IDs, for example, for 34, which is Tritanium, and we're going to get back a page of data, and that data is called XML. So what is XML? Basically, where you would, for example, click on a website and you would get back a page, that page would be primarily in HTML. That's a readable format for you to display on your browser. It's called Hypertext Markup Language. Probably you're familiar with it. What XML is, is is similar to HTML, but it's a little bit different. There are no visual layers applied to an XML page. All you're seeing back is a group of tags and data contained within those tags. And the structure of these is called the hierarchy of the XML. And that's something that's very important. This is why your import XML functions will break. It's because the hierarchy or the way that the XML is laid out will change. The architecture will change. So basically this is where a specific query and a specific, it's actually technically a language of its own, it's called XPath comes in. And so XPath is basically a selector to use within XML for interaction with APIs. That's a lot of acronyms, so I want you to try to stick with me. I'll, I'll, I'll break it down for you. As we're getting this big page, potentially a very large page of data back in XML format, I want you to think of XML just technically as the format of this data, the tags and the way that they're contained, the data is contained inside those tags. But as we get back this rather large page of data, we want to be able to display some very specific piece of that data in our spreadsheet in one specific cell or column of cells. So for example, we may want to display price data in this column, or we may want to display the type ID in this column. And the way that we do that is through a selector technology, and that's called XPath. And this is going to allow us to isolate which data contained inside of this XML that was returned to us we want to display on our spreadsheet. So this XPath, you can actually get tools. Uh, for example, for Google Chrome, there are tons of good add-ons, basically, that's going to help you to identify the XPath of an element contained within an XML. And you can actually open XMLs, even though they're not meant to be viewed uh, uh, visually, you can actually open them on a browser, and you can get a good idea for the structure. And I absolutely do this when I'm, when I'm working with APIs. So once you've identified the structure, we're going to go ahead and either plug it into an XPath, uh, XPath helper, or you're going to do what's called transversing the tree, or basically manually looking at the, the structure and the organization of these tags in order to identify what type of data it is that we want. So basically, we're going to use forward slashes, and we're going to walk down the tree of categories uh, until we get to the category that contains our data. And when we're on that category, then we're going to be able to use the slash at command to identify uh, which subset of data within that category we need. So as you can see here in my import XML command, um, I get all the way to the end of the query, which gets me nested through that structure uh, into the actual price data. And then we're just going to use slash at price, and that's going to give us the price. And if we want something other, some other piece of information from that same row, then we would simply use, for example, slash at type ID or something like that to get that column instead. Now the reason that we're looking at EVE market data today rather than some of the other API uh, services that do exist for price data and EVE Online such as EVE Central is because one of the stumbling blocks that we can have is, is, is in the number of interactions with different servers that we need to have to get this price data or in other words the number of individual pages of API we need to pull and so in the past looking at our dynamic spreadsheeting videos from the past uh, we were limited by the amount of type IDs that we could add into a single API call and therefore we were limited by the number of import XML commands that we could have on the page. Things got redundant very quickly and this is going to tend to scale less than linear in Google Spreadsheets. This will eventually result in your spreadsheet slowing down over time, bogging down, becoming weighed down by the, the virtue of the true number of functions and commands that need to be run on every page load. Because remember in Google, in Google Spreadsheets, this is where Google Docs and Excel differ, is that Excel is a program that's run locally on your machine as a native program and so its ability to access kind of number crunching of your actual computer is quite high. You can harvest your, the resources of your entire CPU but with Google Docs we're limited to working within the sandbox of your browser, right? Google Docs has to run all of these scripts inside of the browser and I think that that is something that does impact 
sort of the speed and the ability to process a more difficult function. So if we can only do 50 type IDs per API call, then that means if we want to look at even, say, 200 or 250 items, we're going to need a lot of API calls, right? That's going to be a lot of, of number crunching that needs to happen, a lot of these individual functions, and of course, a lot of connections. And I want you to think about reaching out and getting that page of API data from whatever server it is you're talking to as being a connection. And so that's basically another point that it could, you know, start to slow down is when that server goes, whoa, hold on here. You know, I've been flooded. I've been inundated by requests from this particular user whose name is Eve Business Insider. This guy's looking for 250,000 pages of API data. Let's, let's think about this for a minute. And they can actually block you. They could actually do what's called blacklisting your IP. CCP can do this as well. That's why a lot of, um, a lot of API connections require additional information, such as a player's name or something like that, so that they can contact you if, if something goes wrong. Or at the very least, so that, you know, they have some understanding that, you know, maybe you're just testing, but that you are, in fact, a registered developer, and so they don't just cut you off immediately. But they can cut you off if you make too many API calls, and that's something I want you to keep in mind as well. So the type of API server that we're going to look at today from eMarket Data allows us to make any amount of type ID calls inside of one API call. And this is very powerful. This is going to allow us to query a very large subset of data rather than a very small one. And as a result, it's going to play much nicer with Google Documents. So one of the claims of Eve Market Data is that you're able to actually query up to 25,000 uh, type IDs with one API query. And I think that that's, um, that's a kind of cool, neat feature. They're trying to open up nearly the entire item set to people that want to query it. Um, but I think it, in my experience, it doesn't actually work that well. Again, it can produce lag. And simply, simply put, I don't really care about 25,000 items. There's a lot of that that's irrelevant to me, you know, as a producer, or perhaps if I'm making the spreadsheet, uh, because I'm a market trader, even that there's a particular subset of items that I want to look at, right? Like you won't be able to trade, for example, carrier halls in GDA, so that information is not interesting to you, right? You know, there's a whole uh, array of things that we could probably cut out. So what we're going to look at today, and I'm going to provide you a link in the description for the spreadsheet so that you can kind of base your sheet off this. But what we're going to look at today is a, uh, a spreadsheet that allows you to select a particular subset of items uh, from the total items list and go ahead and get price data on those. And effectively, we're going to create a new style uh, market watch list, which will, uh, which of course will add some nice gradient scaling and some nice, um, you know, color uh, formatting too, to basically uh, kind of pop out and, and illustrate to you when a particular trade is profitable. Or in the case of manufacturing, which we'll get into in a little bit uh, more depth in future videos, it's going to allow us to identify when a particular, like I say, price spike has occurred in an item, thus leading to its profitability at the uh, point of manufacture. So the first thing we're going to need is a, a new Google Doc spreadsheet. Uh, we're going to make a couple additional sheets, and we're, one of those is going to contain a um, an imported what's called CSV or comma separated values for type IDs. We need a way to index type IDs. Um, so you'll see what I mean in a minute. But basically, we need to uh, go ahead and import a uh, text file or a CSV file. I'm going to give you a link in the description for where to get that as well. It comes from uh, Fuzzy Steve, a developer for Eve Online that I have talked about in previous videos. Uh, stand up dude, love his work, and uh, typeid.csv is something that you will need to get and kind of update in your spreadsheets every every so often. If there's a new update that gets pushed, you know, typically Steve will wait a week or something like that, and then he'll have a new uh, typeid.csv up for us, which is great. Those of us that love spreadsheeting know typeid.csv is uh, one of those really important features. But we're going to go ahead and import that. We're also going to make a config page, and that's going to have some of the uh, base URLs for our lookups stored in it. Uh, and of course, there's some details in that that we can modify, and we will get into that in later videos, but I've provided you with a uh, scaffold that should work just fine. Next, we're going to need a, uh, a sheet for our lookups, which is basically that um, the subset of data that we want to look at. As I have mentioned, we're going to actually specify a list of items that we want to look at. Uh, and then finally, we'll need a page for the results. So basically, the uh, it took me a long time to figure this out. Boy, I tell you. But basically, we're going to need um, two separate spreadsheets, one for the list of items and one for the results from those items. Because something that happens is, um, say you were to provide 100 items that ranges from Tritanium to, I don't know, a battleship or something like that. Um, as you provide that list of items, the API's result may not return that list of type IDs in the same order. So for a long time, I was basically having uh, incorrect price, uh, price data in my spreadsheets because, of course, I wasn't getting the exact you know, same row breakdown, I might ask for, you know, Tritanium first and Armageddon next, and I would get the inverse, I'd get the Armageddon price looking like it's the price of Tritanium. So 
we don't want that. We want a fresh sheet for our results. And then I think technically the best way to do this is to set up a uh, even an additional sheet yet to basically parse those results or filter them. And we're going to flip what's called uh, rotate the table basically and, and provide us the data that we want to see, of course, which is sorted by the uh, total difference between the buy and sell costs. So, of course, we are going to query both buy and sell costs here. And we're going to compare those and try and determine what exactly it is that we want to produce or trade or sell or whatever the case may be. So. That's going to be it for today, guys. I know it was uh, <clears throat> perhaps a little bit shorter than you used to, but uh, this is just something that was requested. Obviously, in the comment section, if you guys want a particular video, I'm happy to go over it. Um, I do realize that a lot of people were having problems kind of with the uh, original market trade sheet that I showed you back in the day, which um, is understandable. Import XML, like I say, can go wrong, uh, mainly when that structure does change. So if you're having problems with that, if you want to use the old method, it's fine. You still can. Just make sure you take a look at that XML output and uh, make sure that your structure works. So as usual, guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in EVE Online, I don't know why this video would make you interested in EVE Online, but if you are, check out, there's a link in the description for a uh, trial account, or pardon me, an alpha account that's going to allow you to unlock 250,000 SP for free. That's it for now, guys. I'm out. Stay tuned for more videos. Peace!